Hello and welcome to Glorious Miniatures. My name's Jolyon, and in today's video we have another Sunday preview. It's the 2nd of June, 2024. Without further ado, let's get into it. Sunday preview, Fire and Faith light up the new season of Warhammer 40,000. Two new codices are on the way this week. As the Adeptus Sororitas and the Gene Sealer cults muster their faithful for a clash of ideology. The Pariah Nexus beckons, and a new mission deck heralds the start of a fresh season for Warhammer 40,000. Alrighty, let's have a look at what we have. We have Chapter Approved, Pariah Nexus Mission Deck, and Mission Objectives. Okay, so we got some cards. The latest season of missions for Warhammer 40,000 kicks off with a grim return to the Pariah Nexus, introducing a brand new deck for generating dynamic, varied games in moments. There are new and updated cards for deployment, mission rules, primary and secondary objectives, and new secret missions as well as pop-out objective tokens and rules for using the deck. Okay then, so we got, there are the uh, tokens, We've got some cards, objective set, very nice. If you want to upgrade your objectives, a set of six large markers is the perfect way to tell if your models are within range or not. Each marker encompasses the entire control range of a regular objective and can be placed under terrain and models to keep the battlefield orderly all game long. Okay, then we can scroll down to the Ad Codex Adeptus Sororitas. Oh, okay, I like the artwork, very nice. Raise your voices in glorious song with the new Codex Adeptus Sororitas, bringing the Emperor's most devout servants fully into the new edition of Warhammer 40,000 with new detachments, updated data sheets, and loads of lore and miniature galleries to solve your soul. Avid collectors can also opt for a Regal Collector's Edition Codex with premium details and a classy alternate cover, marking you as one of the truly pious. And also, I see we got Battle Force Army of Faith. Okie dokie. Righty ho. So take wing and exterminate the Emperor's enemies from the skies with a new airborne battle force for the Adeptus Sororitas, featuring the first appearance of the brand new Cannoness with Jump Pack. This force contains 10 Seraphim and 5 Seraphim, all equipped with winged jump packs and is backed up by the inspirational hymnals and devastating rocket barrages of an exorcist tank. Okay, uh, so it's mostly mostly flying with a ground-based tank, although I suppose it does send rockets into the air. I guess you can uh, I guess you can call that vaguely airborne of sorts. I haven't actually seen this, so this I here is the new Canon S with jump pack right here. I do have some Adeptus Sororitas. I, I, I initially bought into them way back when and have the original... Um, I can't even remember what it's called. The Immolator, I believe it's called. I do have five Seraphim somewhere and some some other uh, sisters knocking around. God knows where they are in storage, I believe. So that is a new Battle Force. I'm expecting a Battle Force of the Gene Stealer Cult as well now. Let's see. So, oh, the Ministorian Priest with Vindicator. I'm abs I need this miniature. Wow. I absolutely need this miniature in my life. Look at it. Absolutely fantastic. I am getting this regardless. Um, Battle Sisters is often attended by members of the Adeptus Ministorum whose fiery litanies inspire them to strike even harder in close combat. In this case, they also pitch into the melee themselves with a brutal weapon known as, known as a Vindicator that combines... Searing hot flames and a roaring chainsword. This is the first standalone release of a miniature previously only available in Warhammer Quest Blackstone Fortress. I already have this miniature then. Um, <laughs> evidently, I haven't got around to painting him yet. Okay, so I don't need to purchase it, but fantastic, absolutely amazing. I love this miniature. Um, I thought it looked vaguely familiar, but evidently not familiar enough. In fact, maybe I've already... I have to have a rummage. But it needs to be painted regardless. I love it. Uh, and we got the Adeptus Sororitas dice and data sheet cards right here. True devotees of the Emperor venerate the Emperor with thematic dice. And we've got just a set coming up cast in pearlescent black plastic with gold pips. Just don't let your fervor get in the way of referencing your rules. But to make absolutely sure you've got everything you need close to hand, you can't do better than a pack of data sheet cards comprising every unit in both the Codex and the Combat Patrol. Here is the Combat Patrol. Combat Patrol Adeptus Sororitas right here. 
Uh, I can't really remember what the old one was, but here's the new one. Wield the holy trinity of Bolt, Flame, and Melter in small-scale games of Warhammer 40,000 with Combat Patrol, Adeptus Sororitas, featuring a diverse range of units that are all so perfect for starting a new full-size army. A highly customizable, Canon S leads a squad of 10 Battle Sisters, 10 Arco Flagellants, and 5 Elite Celestian Sacrosants to dominate at range and up close. Crikey. Okay. Okay, so that is the new... Combat Patrol, I've got... Did the old Combat Patrol have a robot walking suit in it or something? Or am I getting confused with something else? Either way, we've got the Codex Gene Stealer Cults right here. The Day of Ascension has arrived. And the Gene Stealer Cults emerge from below, flush with new detachments and rules that insidious Xenos hybrids. The book contains five detachments, including the Brood Brother Auxilia, that lets you merge select Astro Militarum units into your army and loads of lore and artwork that extols the virtues of the four-armed emperor. Okay then, actually, I'd like the regular one. Not that I dislike this lovely illustration right here, obviously, but uh, i got to say, there's something about this particular image here which is uh, quite snazzy. Um, and here is the battle force. The Biosantic Brood Surge. Hmm. Ooh. Hello. Start your glorious uprising with a wide assortment of useful Gene Stealer Cult's troops in this Biosantic Brood Surge Battle Force. <laughs> Starring the new Benefictus, a powerful anti-tank Psyker, okay? This gathering of disgruntled workers also includes an Abdominant, 5 Aberrants, 10 Neophyte Hybrids, 10 Pure Strain Gene Stealers, and 2 Goliaths, which may be built as Rock Grinders or Trucks. Okay then! So those are the Gene Stealers there. Very snazzy. Aberrants. We've got the thingamajiggles and the new thingamajiggle right there. Both vehicles. This is somewhat tempting. I do actually have a small amount of Gene Stealer cults knocking around somewhere. So this is slightly tempting. And bearing in mind prices are going to go up on the 10th of June. This could be... I'd imagine they already adjusted the price for that. But uh, bear that in mind, folks. And here's the Combat Patrol and Gene Stealer Cults. Storm smaller battlefields with the fast moving, hard hitting speed demons of Combat Patrol, Gene Stealer Cults. A Jackal Alphas leads a squad of five Jackals mounted on roaring motorbikes and a heavily armed ATV. A Swift Achilles Ridge Runner lobs rockets from an armored chassis, while 10 hybrid metamorphs bulk out the numbers with valuable bodies for capturing objectives and holding ground. This is very. This is pretty swift. I like this. This is this this is also snazzy, and uh, I'd imagine that goes quite well with that one potentially. Who knows? I don't really play the game, so eh, that's just a guess. Um, would it be fun to paint? Yes, 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 indeed. That's the important thing for me, at least. Uh, we've got the Gene Stealer Cults and data sheet cards. Those dice are looking nice. Too much time spent planning the Day of Ascension, and not enough time to flick through your codex find out exactly what units do don't worry about that just reference a convenient pack of gene sealer cults data sheet cards and roll a handful of custom cultic dice cast in purple plastic with white pips i gotta say i know i've already just said it but i do like these dice they are tempting and right here we got a big mech Ooh, baby all this praising and scheming is fine and dandy but sometimes you just want to shoot things and the big mech has you covered this hulking orc leader is available as a standalone release for the first time and comes packing either a custom Mega Blaster or Tractor Blaster on his left hand and a Power Claw or Driller on his right. Okay, this one I'm definitely getting. I do have some Orcs knocking around and uh, they need this miniature. It's a very busy miniature, but uh, that will be a fun project. we got the Shield Captain here. Shield Captains are the best of the best of the best of the best. We're here because you're looking for the best of the best of the best, sir. Uh, the strongest and smartest custodians whose tactical knowledge and indomitable combat skills make them the clear choice to lead their exceptional comrades into battle. The standalone release of the miniature previously seen in the Auric Champions Battle Force comes with helmeted and unhelmeted head options and is equally deadly up close or at range thanks to the power of their Relic Pothorite Spear. And we got the White Dwarf uh, issue 501. There is Abaddon himself. The next 500 issues of the world's best Warhammer magazine begin with a bang as the Chaos Space Marines invades the pages 
while the Necrons and Adeptus Mechanicus are tied up dealing with the third part in their Temporal Anomaly series. Elsewhere, an in-depth treatise tackles the ramifications of the Vermin Doom on the Warhammer Age of Sigmar cosmology and new missions from the White Dwarf Bunker Pit, Warhammer 40,000 commanders against each other in the midst of an apocalyptic cyclonic warhead attack. That is quite the mouthful right there. And let's see, we have Siege of Vrax. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. Relive one of the greatest sieges ever. Fought by the Death Corps of Krieg in Siege of Vrax by Steve Lenz. Retelling the epic story first seen in the pages of Imperial Armor from the perspective of the soldiers fighting in its deadly trenches. The novel follows an officer named Tybork as the siege grinds on through the worst conditions imaginable. Conditions that threaten to break even the hardiest troops the Astra Militarum has to offer. Okay. I like that's a pretty sweet cover. Um Siege of Racks will be available in hardback ebook and MP3 audiobook. Audiobook editions, as well as a French language paperback and ebook versions. However, devoted fans of the Death Corps can also opt for a stunning special edition wrapped in a printed canvas cover with black page edges and a somber brown ribbon page marker. The hardback special edition isn't as just a fancy cover either. It also contains the additional short story, Less Than Human, and is signed and numbered to mark it as a true collector's piece. And we also have some Black Library classics right here. Four popular Black Library tales return to shelves with new editions as Rose in Darkness by Danny Ware and Creed, Ashes of Cadia by Jude Reed get their paperback releases right here. And we got new audiobook editions abound as City of the Damned by David Geimer follows Gotrek and Felix into the Ruins of More Time. Yes. Not really keen on audiobooks, but More Time has been mentioned. It has been mentioned. So it has been said I must purchase. Uh, while Kakaradan's Red Tithe by Robbie McNiven lifts the lid on these vicious and mysterious space ruins as they tackle. The only Chaos Space Marines almost as terrifying as they are, the Night Lords. Uh, that is actually also quite tempting. I've just finished the Night Lords, the Night Lords Omnibus, in fact, which I really enjoyed. Um, almost wishing for a second Omnibus in the same sort of uh, thingamajiggle as that. But this is this is also tempting. We also have Helbrecht's Knight of the Throne French edition. Grand Marshal of the Black Templars has crossed the Rubicon Primaris and now must travel to the ruined world of Heveran to seek out a sacred relic. Can Helbrecht find it or will an ancient enemy finally enact a revenge that's been 10,000 years in the planning? Find out in a new French language release of Helbrecht, Knight of the Throne by Mark Collins, available to pre order soon in hardback and ebook editions. And then there's obviously the Warhammer Plus stuff, which, as we know, we don't really go over on this channel. So that is that. There's uh, a couple of interesting things. Do bear in mind, as I've said before, prices are supposedly going up on the 10th of this month. Um, so if you've any got anything in mind, now is the time to maybe, maybe get those things, especially if it's probably like the more expensive Forge World resin, like it's sort of whatever the, whatever the price increase, it'll be quite a lot, um, especially on the more expensive stuff. It'll definitely be more noticeable than it's already going to be. So just bear that in mind, folks. A couple of interesting things in this this sun, this Saturday's uh, pre-order coming up that I might be getting into. I do apologize last week. Um, I, I had a seizure, so I don't think I did a video. And uh, so it's all been a bit, bit terrible. All last week was a complete write-off, unfortunately for me. However, that is not the um, end of the world. The studio is, it's making progress. I think it's, there's a very good chance that the majority of it is going to be finished. There's a very good chance it's going to be finished on time by the end of the month. And uh, the only thing which is kind of slowing things down is the installation of a of sort of a new window. Uh, that's going to take probably two weeks, maybe three weeks at the most to get it fitted in um, and ordered and fitted in at least. So that is that. I'm also getting some FDM printers. So I will be adding some scenery etc to my web store that is i am making progress on that it's just taking forever 
So that is also hopefully going to go vaguely live around about the 1st of July as well. So do bear that in mind. Check me out over on Twitch where I will be streaming some gaming this month and then back to sort of mini painting in, well, July, basically. And that's all I've got to say. Make sure that you like, subscribed, hit the bell for notifications. I'll see you in the next one. Thank you and goodbye.